formidable, and they lose their nerve. Maybe the buffalo sense a weakness in the lion's battle strategy. Can they spot the incompetence of Laduna's sons? Who knows? But the massive herbivores stand their ground against their oppressors. Once again, Laduma's sons have failed to raise their game. Such a sloppy approach would leave most young males with a hungry and desperate future ahead of them. But Makalolo, yet again, offers them a soft option. Another tiny elephant calf wanders alone. Born only a few weeks previously, he's been abandoned by his herd. Newborn elephants are prone to attack, and sensing danger, his mother and concerned aunts try to push the calf to its feet. But he just wasn't strong enough. His family stuck with him at first, but eventually had no choice but to leave him and let nature take its course. He survived the first days alone, but unprotected, he faces grave danger. The pride has picked up his scent. But the baby gets a lucky break. The bull elephant crashes onto the scene, stalling the lion's attack. They wait to see what will happen next. orphan remains at risk. Will a bull elephant, an unpredictable loner, tolerate a calf? They seem to form an unlikely alliance. But a male elephant isn't inclined to watch over a lost baby. Their companionship can only last a few hours. The calf stumbles on alone. The African bush takes no hostages. The sick and needy stand out as beacons to the hungry and opportunistic. Predicting impending doom is their speciality. Trumped by nightfall, they must wait for another day. They don't call it the lion's share for nothing. They will get the most of this easy meal. And dehydrated, probably traumatized, the baby elephant gives up the ghost, sparing itself from a more gruesome death. Malu and Kimi, now juveniles, don't know it, but this will be the last time they feed so easily. They've got competition. Little do they realize that their mother 
Laduma, is pregnant again. Malu, Kimba and their five brothers will soon need to think about moving on. Three and a half months ago, Pamwi picked up the smells, telling him the lionesses were ready to mate. He mounted them several times an hour for four days, a sexual marathon. The birth of a new litter will mark a turning point in the lives of Marlu and Kimba. With more mouths to feed, it's crunch time. The extra competition means life will get tougher from here on in. Although they've grown in strength and confidence, the brothers still haven't made a kill. The time for lessons is almost over. Perhaps sensing that they need a game plan, they give their mother some proper backup. It's a turning point for the boys. The buffalo look rattled. A fast charge confuses the herd, and in the chaos, there's a strangler. But two young guns have narrow odds against a buffalo army. It's time for all the brothers to get involved. By spreading out to create a buffalo front line, a standoff ensues. The lions still need an old hand for the finishing touch. This time, it's their aunt, Marta, who backs up the boys. The cubs did help to execute a classic ambush, but they still can't finish the job. The rest of the buffaloes have sensibly backed off. So Luduma takes this opportunity to teach her sons another crucial lesson. Instead of quickly suffocating the calf herself, she lets it go for the young males to kill. With this opportunity suddenly thrust upon them, the cubs seem confused, lazy even. It's like watching a domestic cat playing with its food. Are these lions simply not hungry enough to make a kill? It's highly unusual to see a lion hold back its killer instinct. Even Mardi has a casual approach to the kill. Then, the calf suddenly struggles a little, and a primal instinct kicks in. Mardi grabs the animal's throat. A little sustained pressure, and the calf will suffocate. But she doesn't see it through. Is Mardi hoping the cubs will come back and have a go? Or is she too suffering from the same laid-back attitude towards killing? Even faced with the wrath and weaponry of the Cape Buffalo, can they simply not be bothered to learn to kill in the classic way? It's nightfall before the lions tuck in. Round here, death does not always come quickly. other problems to deal with. Soon, along with their brothers, they will be forced to leave, 
but they must sharpen up their act. Family dynamics are changing. The growing males are showing dominance over their mothers, but they still can't handle killing on their own. In lion society, dominant males rarely make the kill when with the pride, but they usually monopolize the meal. Pamwi turns up right on cue. Kimba and Marlu give him space. The two brothers are developing a close bond, a bond that could, one day, put them into direct competition with their father. To keep the young upstarts in check, Pamwi moves in to shake things up. now crowd the carcass, so he turns on them. A good lesson has been learned. Big males eat first. Kimber grabs what he can and retreats. The new litter of young cubs gets preferential treatment. From now on, the adults will look out for them. The patriarch is just marking time before his older sons inevitably leave the pride. Even <laughs> Tensions within the pride simmer on into October. Then the Makalolo heatwave begins. Temperatures up in the 30s drain the colour from the landscape. Dust storms sweep through, and even the man-made boreholes dry up. Pamwi must lead the pride deeper into the parched scrub. Kimba, Marlu and the other large cubs still trek with the family. With food getting harder to find, they remain an essential part of the team. Their mothers, however, will be watching their every move. The new cubs are now the priority. At what's left of the water holes, thousands of feet and hooves churn the mud into a potential death trap. Adult elephants indulge in the usual skin care routine, but for a baby, it's a new danger. The mud acts like quicksand, sinking the calf to its stomach. It's not strong enough to pull itself free, and the more it wriggles, the more the mud sucks the calf in. The elephants in this area have already lost two calves. But this time, the mother successfully intervenes, tenderly coaxing with a massive foot and easing her calf free. The mud is a real menace. Buffalo have broad, flat hooves to stay on top of it, but invisible holes riddle the pool. Once you slip in, the mud draws you down further. For two days, this helpless cow 